It's with great pleasure that I can introduce Stephen Hodkinson, Professor Stephen Hodkinson of the University of Nottingham, who is here for a free ride. You're not actually doing anything at the conference today. <laughs> I've come to the conference uh, simply out of pleasure. To, Fantastic. Uh, to hear other colleagues and find out what's, uh, what, what's new in the field. And is there anything um, that struck your interests so far in the, in the last day or so? Any particular panel? Or? Um, I've been going to um, a variety of panels, but I've been particularly interested in, in those panels that have um, looked uh, comparatively across different societies. Uh, there's been some very inter interesting uh, talks about uh, um, uh, Greeks and barbarians mm -hmm. on, on the ancient Near East. And um, that's, that's really interesting because you're, you, you, you've been running this project for the last few years, haven't you, that, that's precisely taking a, a comparative perspective. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Yes, the project's uh, called uh, Sparta in Comparative Perspective and um, it's going, been going for half a dozen years now. It uh, was funded for quite a long time by the Arts and Humanities Research Council and um, we're now in the final stages uh, of putting together the project pub um, publications. And what's that going to look like, do you think? I, 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 yeah, let, let's start off with that question. What, 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 what's the final thing going to look like? Right, well, um, there's going to be three main publications, of which the first has already been published, a volume called Sparta Comparative Approaches, mm -hmm. um, looking uh, at how Sparta compares with other Greek city-states, whether she is an exceptional uh, or, or a typical uh, Greek polis. So that, that's been the first uh, publication. Um, Another one is due later this year, which will be called Sparta in Modern Thought. Mm -hmm. And that's a key part of the project because part of the, the thesis underlying the project is that Sparta has been viewed um, as an unusual society, um, largely because of the way that modern society, modern socio-political thought, uh, views her um, as a, a rather uh, odd, um, militaristic, uh, uh, almost totalitarian society. Um, and it's uh, against that um, modern perspective that much of my project is, is, is aiming, um, aiming to, to re-evaluate how Sparta has been appropriated in modern thought and, and, and getting behind those modern images to the, uh, to, to, to the authentic uh, historical Sparta. So what is the authentic historical Sparta? Is it weird or isn't it weird? Um, it's um, the best way to perhaps say it is that um, Sparta is typically Greek, but extremely typically Greek. <laughs> um, um, many Spartan uh, customs and practices um, uh, mirror those uh, of uh, um, other Greeks. In mm -hmm. fact, um, um, particularly in the archaic period, Sparta is often initiating uh, customs that, that, that uh, uh, become standard Greek practice. Um, but Sparta takes them uh, to extremes. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously her education system is the uh, one aspect for which she's uh, particularly noted. Um, Sparta has the, the only um, public state physical um, education system in, in the classical Greek world. And, and in that respect um, she, she is uh, exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, but what I am arguing has happened in, in, in modern uh, thought is that, is that um, the education system ha has been treated as if it's the entirety of a young Spartan upbringing, and recent work has suggested that alongside the state physical um, upbringing, there's a, a, a normal um, um, Greek uh, paideia, which is, which is privately funded and, and, and uh, um, w would be um, quite similar to, to, to what Greeks in other cities um, would, would have found. I see. So it's not just the state system. There are there are these uh, other uh, ways of um, educating the Spartan child alongside that or intersecting with it. Yes, and in general, um, Sparta is a Greek policy in which the private and the public work um, very much, very much in, in parallel. Right. I guess I mean one problem, um, one thing that's striking me at this point is the problem of dealing with Sparta, and I guess that's why it's it's always being kind of put as the other to Athens for the lack of evidence. So, what kind of evidence are you using? How are you, how are you uh, dealing with this problem of the lack of sources relating to Sparta? Yes, the lack of sources is, is one issue, particularly the lack of native Spartan sources. Um, the other issue uh, is that those sources that we do have are largely, um, they are uh, almost entirely non-Spartan, mm. and particularly many of them are, are Athenian, mm. um, stemming from a period when Athens and Sparta are, are um, um, deadly rivals. Mm. Um, so um, 
part of my project is looking not just at the, the modern myths about Sparta, but about the, the ancient uh, uh, Athenian images, which are very dependent uh, uh, upon um, um, the situation at the time that the, the, the writers were producing their works. And um, one can trace changing Athenian attitudes to, to poor Sparta, um, um, which, 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 which mirror um, Athens' own internal politics and, and her international uh, position. So, so that, that, that means that the very sources upon which we have to depend mm -hmm. are themselves the most untrustworthy sources you could, you could imagine. Right, so um, it, it, it must be very difficult then to um, extract information from you have to be quite careful with with how you're conducting this um, this approach well you have to move away from the field of explicit opinion mm -hmm. so if uh, um, if uh, uh, Plato makes an opinion about Sparta you have to put that to one side and say well um, let's try to read between the lines yeah. what, what's the context in which this is being saying uh, being said and um, how can we interpret it and, and, and match it with other sources um, and extract the um, the hidden messages about Sparta uh, that that um, are different from the explicit opinion that, that's being voiced. And are there um, um, other sources than just literary? Are you also using visual culture, archaeological evidence, as well as part of this project? Um, part of part of the project um, has involved looking particularly at Sparta's system of heritage, mm. uh, her, her exploitation of the um, servile hot hell population. Mm -hmm. And um, very important in that has been uh, two major um, archaeological surface surveys of different parts of uh, a Spartan territory, uh, which enable one to get some sense of, of how the, the native population would have been spread and settled around the territory. And one can see some interesting patterns of uh, the way that the, the, the helots uh, live their lives from, from, from comparing those, those two surveys. Yeah, because I guess the helots is one of the, again the things that um, when you or when I'm thinking of Sparta, that I immediately think of them uh, uh, being suppressed by the Spartans, and again the difficulty of getting any kind of um, uh, evidence that you can you can interpret. So I guess it's it's quite a quite a difficulty. Well, it is, and one tactic that I've been using, and this is where the comparative angle comes in again, is looking at other unfree agrarian labour systems such as uh, modern uh, Russian serfdom, um, um, uh, plantation uh, slavery in the Americas and also slavery in pre-colonial Africa mm. um, where one can see um, comparable uh, groups of, of um, agricultural labourers in, in, in a servile condition and one can look at what are the key variables that influence um, how these people um, um, run their lives and, and how they're exploited by, by their masters. And although you can't use comparative evidence to say you know, this is how it worked in Russia, therefore this is how, yeah. how it worked in, in yeah. Sparta, but, but you, can see, you, ask, you can see what are the key questions you should be uh, asking and uh, what, what are the, um, the variables that might give you some, some sense of, of how the helots might have lived their lives. So, kind of in conclusion, when you're saying that Sparta is kind of the the ultimate Greek state in a way, it's more more Greek than the Greeks. What do you what do you mean by this? Well, that that's <laughs> that's very hard to pinpoint. Um, well, let, let, let's perhaps conclude by just taking the, the issue of Sparta's military reputation, which yeah. is another focus of the project. Yeah. Um, the Sparta is known for her her um, very efficient uh, army. Um, and it's often assumed that the Spartans must devote, have devoted a, a large part of their lives to military training. Um, and it's true that they were available for military uh, training because they didn't have to farm their own lands, unlike uh, Greek farmers and, and other, other states. But the amount of time the Spartans actually spent on military training, when you look at um, trying to reconstruct a day to Spartans' life, uh, uh, is actually quite minimal. Uh, they spend a lot of their time on, on, on um, civic political pursuits, a lot of time on, on, on their private family affairs, looking after their property and so on. And this is really interesting because um, thinking of Pericles' funeral oration of Thucydides, you know, um, Thucydides is one of the main sources of obviously an Athenian, yes. and you know, obviously Pericles as a great Athenian democratic leader, you know, he has his own view of Sparta, but he, he says that, um, that 
that what differentiates the Athenians from the Spartans is that the both in the Athenians, I think, are naturally courageous, and the Spartans have been trained to be courageous. And that that um, um, idea is is still very popular in the in our consciousness now. Thinking of you know, you don't want to talk about this, I'm sure, but the three hundred, the the beginning of the three hundred is all about the the Spartan education system, how it's all about training for war. So what you what you seem to be suggesting here is is much more complicated than that, much more nuanced. It is, and. Um, the passage of Thucydides that you're referring to, the funeral oration of Pericles, is one of the first sources that brings up this image of, of a um, highly military trained Spartan. Um, you don't get imp that impression from, from earlier sources, from, from the writings of Pindar, for example, where the spears of the young man are mentioned, but, but they're only, only one part of Spartan, Spartan life. Mm. Um, and um, go back to your question about you know, in what way is Sparta, sort of, uh, like other Greeks, um, the Spartans have this very efficient army, but, but um, it's based upon not that much more training uh, in, in the art of warfare than, than in other Greeks. The uh, um, Spartans are typically Greek in, 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 in that they, um, their training for warfare is largely gymnastic, given them physically fit, rather than um, hours spent uh, on weapons training or, or, or more military drill. Um, and, as you say, this image um, does persist uh, right to the present day. Um, as late as the 1980s, um, in American intelligence uh, thinking, they were using Sparta as an analogue for understanding the Soviet Union, right, yeah. um, uh, under the presidency of, of, of Ronald Reagan, when they were rethinking uh, uh, um, policy towards the Soviet Union. Yeah, that's and Sparta was an interesting example of, of a um, uh, what well, they thought it was an example of, of a command economy that was heavily militaristic and therefore could be used for envisioning, envisaging the, the operation of, of the Soviet economy. So this is, it really does show the value then of the comparative approach because you're, it seems to me that you're using um, modern, well I guess, yeah, modern interpretations of Sparta and how that has influenced the way we think about Sparta. I mean, let me rephrase that totally. <laughs> um, <laughs> how modern political context influenced the way you, you think about the ancient world and, and one particular group within the ancient world, the Spartans, and the evidence then from the ancient world gets re-read through the, um, the lens of contemporary concerns. Yes, that's right, yes. Um, um, since democracy became the um, ideologically you know, um, dominant uh, system in, in modern society, in other words, since the, um, the early 19th century, um, um, Sparta has been seen as this sort of the, the anti-model, the, the non-democratic state, and, and, and therefore associated with militaristic regimes like Prussia in the 19th century, and then in the 20th century with Nazi Germany and, and the Soviet Union, as I mentioned. Yeah. Whereas, um, had we been living um, 250 years ago, um, around uh, 1750, um, Sparta would have been the, the normal model of Greek polis, uh, famed for its uh, a well-balanced mix of both civic and military virtues, uh, the kind of state that moderns would have wanted to, to, to emulate.